Well, hello, Highland Christian Church. This is Zach, and I am excited to be teaching Romans Bible study to you. Uh, we're going to be in Romans chapter 15, verses 22 through 33. I will say that again. Romans chapter 15, verses 22 through 33. And what I want to go ahead and do is go ahead and read the last portions of chapter 15, the passage we're going to be in today. I want to go ahead and read our passage today pray, and then dive right into uh, this teaching, this text we're about to walk through together. Uh, so will you follow along with me starting in verse 22? It says this. This is the reason that I have so often been hindered from coming to you. But now with no further place for me in these regions, I desire as have for many years to come to you. When I go to Spain, for I do hope to see you on my journey and to be sent on by you once I have enjoyed your company for a little while. At present, however, I am going to Jerusalem and ministry to the saints, for Macedonia and Achaia have been pleased to share their resources with the poor among the saints at Jerusalem. They are pleased to do this, and indeed they owe it to them. For if the Gentiles come to share in the spiritual blessings, they ought also to be the service to them in the material things. So when I have completed this and have delivered to them what has been collected, I will set out by way of you to Spain, and I know that when I come to you, I will come in the fullness of the blessings of Christ." I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by our Lord Jesus Christ and by the love of the Spirit to join me in earnest prayer to God on my behalf, that I may be rescued from the unbelievers in Judea, and that my and that and that my ministry to Jerusalem may be acceptable to the saints, so that by God's will I may come to you with joy and be refreshed in your company. The God of peace be with all of you. Amen. Will you pray with me? God, we thank you for this time we get to have. We thank you for all that you do and being the God that you are. God, um, open our minds and our hearts. Open our ears, Lord, so we may hear your very word. That we may understand it. That we may truly grasp what Paul is saying. What you are saying through Paul in this last closing section of chapter 15 of Romans. Holy Spirit, move um, in the ways that you do. Move in our hearts, convict our hearts, Lord, and let us learn. Be opening to learning what your word says, what it means, what the impact of the gospel means, and what it means to be a generous Christian. Lord, we pray this in your heavenly name. Amen. Now, as I said before, uh, this is the closing um, kind of chapter uh, of chapter 15. This is the closing section of chapter 15. Before we get into our last chapter of Romans chapter 16, I can tell you it's been a long, long time in studying uh, this wonderful letter that Paul has written. Um, but before we get into our lesson, before we get into our teaching, I want to give you some context uh, because context is king and when studying scripture. So I want to give you some context into um, what this letter kind is about. Uh, we say this every week, but this is a letter that is written to the church in Rome, and Paul is writing this letter to kind of accomplish kind of a few couple different things, and this is his fullest explanation of the gospel, and that's very exciting because Paul is, this is later on in his ministry. He's very mature, and so he knows uh, quite a bit. He's been studying uh, kind of the truth, been uh, grasping kind of the truth of Christ, what the gospel really means. Um, so this is his fullest explanation of the gospel, but there's also some issues going on in the church um, in Rome and what is happening. You have the Gentiles, and you have the Jews, and they're kind of conflicting in this moment. You see, the Jews were excited spelled at one point uh, from Rome. They had to leave Rome, including the Jewish Christians. They had to leave Rome, but um, another emperor kind of came in place and said, you know what? You can come back into, into Rome. And so they come back, but they come back to a church. These Jewish Christians come back to a church that's not like the church they had before, uh, before they left. And so you have all these people not following these Gentiles. Gentiles just means non-Christian. And so you have all these people 
not following all this Levitical law, all this ritual, this religious stuff that all these Jewish people were doing, uh, stuff that they were doing from the Old Testament still. And now they're kind of conflicting on that. They're conflicting. And what is essentially happening is that the church is kind of splitting. Uh, the church is dividing in this moment. So you have Jews going at people, uh, going and being angry at the Gentiles, and the Gentiles in return are being angry at the Jews. And you have this conflict going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And what Paul is doing is kind of uniting that factor, kind of giving his fullest explanation of the gospel, but uniting the fact of, hey, Jews and Gentiles, y'all should be together. Why? Because the church is a united body. I mean, if you look through all out scripture and what Paul uh, essentially writes in his letters, it's the fact that, hey, you are one united body. You need each other. You need to be together because the church is united. Um, and what Paul is doing in this very moment in these last closing chapters, especially in chapter 15, is uniting that last final unite to the body that says, hey, Gentiles, hey, Jews, come together uh, in this very moment. If you can remember what we talked about last week, Paul is uh, assuring them that, hey, y'all can do this very thing. Hey, like, I, I, I'm not... I, I've spoken to you boldly. I, I, I've said to you these things boldly because of uh, God's grace that he has given to me. But understand, I am reassuring you in this moment that you can teach one another these things. Y'all have the truth. Y'all have this goodness about y'all that y'all are able to instruct one another. Y'all are able to solve these problems. There's some good to y'all. Paul's not saying, hey, y'all are absolute terrible Christians, are absolutely a terrible church. No, Paul acknowledges and says, hey, y'all understand this thing. Y'all technically don't really need me to solve every issue. Y'all are capable of doing this very thing. And what Paul also mentions and what we talked about last week is that, hey, I am a vessel. I, I have I have essentially done really nothing. It is all God that is doing all this work through me. We are, we are vessels. And that is a very humbling, humbling moment is that God is using him to write this letter, uh, is using him to write this letter uh, to show what he is doing and what he's teaching, teaching this truth, teaching this fullest explanation of the gospel to the Jews and the Gentiles, the people, the Christians in this very church and answering those purposes of explaining the gospel, answering the purpose of uniting the Jews and Gentiles. But there's another purpose to what Paul is doing. And then that is in our text that we're about to walk through today. And it's a very short, it's a very simple text. Um, and it's Paul's plan to visit Rome. Um, that's kind of what the, the heading says, but it's Paul's plan to go actually west, have this vision to go west and take the gospel out to Spain. And Paul has this very unique vision, this very unique calling to go out there. And what we're about to walk through, what we're about to see is some unique themes, some unique ideas of what Paul is kind of presenting uh, in this very moment. You may be reading it. You may have read this before, uh, verses 22 through 33. You may have read this before and said, man, how can I ever really kind of learn something Um from Paul stating kind of why he wants to go visit Rome, why he kind of wants to go uh, go to Spain and take the gospel to Spain. Isn't it kind of just like, hey, I'm just trying to do this, but there's kind of a lot we can kind of learn uh, from this moment in being generous Christians, what it means to kind of take the gospel to different places, what it means to be a cheerful giver, but honestly what it means to be in relationship with other Christians. So with that being said, let's dive into our text today, starting in verse 22. I will read verses 22 and 23 together, and it says this. This is the reason that I have so often been hindered from coming to you. But now with no further place for me in these regions, I desire and as have for many years to come to you. You so Paul in finishing chapter fifteen and uh in driving this push for him to visit Rome and to go and take the gospel out west, he says, I have often been hindered from coming to you. Now hindered in the Greek is the word in uh 
it, let me, I'm trying not to butcher this, Encopto. It is Encopto, which means it is more used in a, in a divine sense when they write this, when you really study the Greek, and it means God hindered me. God God kept me uh, from going and sing. Now, usually this is kind of used in the negative. When you think about that, you would think it of kind of a, a, a negative way. Well, God, why would you do that? God, why would you keep Paul from going there? But this is Paul, and how Paul is using it is in the most beautiful way, in a very unique way to show his calling and what God is calling him to do and what God is working uh, through Paul to do in those areas. And what Paul uh, was saying here in this moment, what was hindering him in this moment is he was preaching the gospel in these other areas that he is in right now. There was some work that God was calling to uh calling him to do some work in these areas that he was in. And the thing that he states is, I desire and have for many years to come to you. He says that in the opening chapter uh, of Romans in chapter one, he's been longing to come. He's been uh, wanting to come visit the church in Rome. And remember, Paul has written this letter. He hasn't even seen uh, the Christians in Rome, but he's writing this letter to them. But he has this desire. He has this intimacy. He wants relationship with the church in Rome because it's very easy to read this kind of out of context. It's very, very easy to read this out of context because when you read it, it's kind of like, ah, oh, well, Paul, it kind of just seems like you're really just wanting them to support you on your journey. It kind of really just seems like you're kind of just wanting them to raise money so then you can just go to Spain. Now, that is a purpose of what Paul is doing, but Paul, ever since the beginning, even of this letter, ever since he has heard about the church in Rome, has a desire. He has an intimacy to want to go and see them, want to go and be with them. He says, but now with no further place for me in these regions, that means, uh, his calling, what he has been doing, this work that he has been doing is now uh, coming to pass. There's there's a new calling to go to Rome and then to Spain. He says, but now with no further place for me in these regions, I desire as have for many years to come to you. And that's something we sh should truly, truly admire. It's the fact that Paul wants to visit them. Paul wants to be with them the church in Rome for quite some time. He wants to be with them. As we're going to see um, kind of in verse 24, is Paul kind of express and go deeper into that relationship aspect? That's something we should know as Christians. Fellowship is very important to the Christian lifestyle. Fellowship is an essential thing to the Christian lifestyle. And I said before, we're going to get to uh, that in verse 24, but note that Paul wants to see them. Paul desires uh, to be around them, to be in the presence with them. And that's a theme that's going to develop. But going in uh, to verse 24, Paul says this. He says, uh, we'll, we'll read verse 23 because verse 24 is kind of in the middle uh, of a sentence. He says, but now with no further place for me in these regions, I desire as I have for many years to come to you, when I go to Spain, for I do hope to see you on my journey and to be sent on by you once I have enjoyed your company for a little while. You see, that's that's the moment that Paul says. Or he says, you know, I, I, I desire to come see you, but I want to spend quality time with you. But more importantly, before I go to Spain, I, I, I want to spend an amount of time with with you. I, I, I want to fellowship with you. I want to get to know you. I want to know your names. I want to share meals with you. And one thing that we have to understand that fellowship is essential uh, to Christians. That's what the early church was devoted on and doing. If you look at Acts chapter 2 verse 42, it says this, they devoted themselves to the apostles teaching and fellowship and to the breaking of bread and the prayers. He wants to have fellowship with them and understand that the early church was devoted to that very thing. The early church, if you read Acts, when the church was starting, man, they did everything together. They absolutely did everything, everything together. You name it, the church in Acts did it. The early church, our brothers and sisters in ancient times in Acts were doing everything together and that's the very thing is that it's fellowship it's fellowship and in ancient times and what i love in ancient times and i would say our culture has kind of kind of refrained from this 
uh, from quite some time, but sharing a meal with somebody, when I share a meal with somebody, it's very intimate. In ancient biblical times, when, when someone came into your house and you had a meal with them, that was very intimate. Why? Because you were inviting them into your home, and when you invited someone into their home, you were inviting them into your own life. It was that very thing. He said, hey, I, I, I want to sit around a table. I want to sit around and share a conversation with you. More importantly, what I love is that if, if the body needs nutrition, you have to eat to keep your body uh um, to keep your body kind of healthy, to keep uh, kind of your calorie count. It's the thing is that I want to be able to contribute to your body. And that's a very, very special thing. Not only do I want to contribute to your body, I want to help contribute to your life. Hey, we're in this thing together. We're going to do life together. So let me share. Let me make a meal for you. And uh, what a question that I love and a question that I've been pondering and when I studied this very thing is, man, when was the last time I asked myself, when was the last time I actually had fellowship with another Christian? When is the last time I actually reached out to um, one of my fellow brothers and sisters in the faith? And when's the last time I said, hey, do you want to hang out? Or, or hey, hey, let's let's go after church and let's go have a meal together. Or when's the last time I even just reached out to see, hey, how are you doing? When was that last kind of phone call I had um, of my brother and sister in the faith? Because that, because fellowship is an essential thing. Yes, uh, the apostles teaching. Yes, teaching what the word says. Uh, the breaking of bread, communion. Those are all important, but also, but also as well, fellowship. Fellowship is essential to the Christian. So I challenge you. Hey, have a meal. Uh, with your fellow brother and sister. Have a meal uh, with them. Uh, ask how they're doing. Have that phone call with them just to see, hey, how are you doing? What other interests do we share? Hey, if you like arts and crafts, go do arts and crafts with your brothers and sisters. Hey, if you like hunting, you like fishing, go hunting and fishing with your fellow brothers and sisters. Spend time in the presence with uh, your fellow brothers and sisters because as we see Paul do, he wants to spend quality time with his brothers and sisters in the faith. I have enjoyed your company for a little while. Yeah, I'm going to go to Spain, but guess what? I want to stay with you for a while. I want to get to know who you are. And that's a great and tremendous picture that I love that Paul uh, gives us in that moment because we're going to share eternity with these people. We're going to send we're going to spend eternity uh, with all these people who we see next to each other in the church. So why not spend time with them now? Why not spend time with them in this very moment? Because that is that very thing. Spending time with other Christians here on earth and then spending time with them, understanding that very thing. We're going to have eternity with Jesus, with these very people. Um, and as I said before, uh, uh, going on kind of from that fellowship thing is the thing that Paul, and what I love that Paul does is that he, he wants to rely on the generosity of other Christians. He wants to rely on uh, that very thing because he wants to go to Spain. He wants to take uh, the gospel out west, but understand it's, kind of, it's, kind of, it's very expensive and you, you need resources uh, for that very thing. He says, when I go to Spain, for I do hope to see you on my journey and to be sent on by you to be sent on by you paul in this moment is asking uh and is relying on the fellow christians and uh christians in rome to hey can you help support me in this very thing can you help financially but more importantly can you help in allowing people to come with me and taking the gospel to spain or more importantly can you help in prayer can you help help in prayer uh prayer? <laughs> can you help in prayer uh on my journey to spain because that's the very thing is paul is going to rely on the generosity of christians that's a theme that's going to build um throughout kind of what we're really walking through in this very moment so continuing on to our text uh paul says this in verse 25 he says at present however i am going to jerusalem and ministry to the saints for Macedonia and Achaia have been pleased to share their resources with the poor among the saints at Jerusalem. Um, so before Paul can kind of go visit Rome, uh, there, there's there's another calling that he has to do before he can go uh, 
to Rome and then off to Spain. So what Paul has to do and what Paul is called to do is actually take an offering that has been raised up from the Christians in Macedonia and Achaia. That he's going to take these, uh, this blessing, this offering blessing, this financial help, these resources to the poor in Jerusalem. He has to take a stop in Jerusalem before he can go out west. And uh, important to note is that these Christians in Macedonia and Achaia, Paul has known for uh, for quite some time. It's believed uh, to be that these were the Christians that Paul was kind of first uh, converting to Christianity with uh, Barnabas. If you can remember back in Acts when Paul and Barnas, Barnabas were a ministry team and going and preaching and spreading the gospel uh, kind of in those places. But before Paul can do that, he has to go to Jerusalem to take this offering. And as I said before, this uh, this, ge this generosity of Christians is really something we can really grasp and learn from this text. Um, he says, at present, however, I'm going to Jerusalem and ministry to the saints for Macedonia and Acadia have been pleased to share their resources. They were pleased to share their resources and something uh, we have to know and something we have to really understand that generosity is the key theme that Paul is getting that within uh, that very verse, but more importantly, stating why he has to go to Jerusalem. Why he has to go is that, hey, there are Christians out here. There were the Christians in Macedonia. There were the Christians in Achaia that raised up money. They saw a need. They saw people in need. They saw people hurting, struggling. It's the factor that they saw them hurting that said, hey, we want to do something about that. We feel called to do something about that. So they raise up this money and they send it. And when we get into verse uh, 27, you're going to see that generosity. You're going to see the attitude of uh, being a generous Christian. But the thing is, before Paul can go, to, uh, before Paul can go out west, as I said before, he has to stop in Jerusalem to show the generosity of the Christians in Macedonia and Achaia. Uh, and so, going into verse. Uh, 27, he says this, uh, they were pleased to do this and indeed they owe it to them for if the Gentiles have come to share in their spiritual blessings. They ought also to be, uh, of service to them in the material things. Here we see the attitude embrace of the Christians that have raised up these resources, raised up this financial, uh, support to take, um, so Paul can take to Jerusalem. And what I love is the beginning of verse 27. It says this. They were pleased to do this. They were pleased to do this. The attitude of the generosity and really what it means to be a cheerful giver. 2 Corinthians 9, 7 says, For each of you must give as you have made up your mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion. For God loves a cheerful giver. God loves a cheerful giver. And so when we give out of our own hearts, when we give out of our own pocket, it's not the thing that we said, oh, I, I, I have to give to the church or, oh man, this person's in need. I have to give to them. No, that, that that's not with love and that's not being a cheerful giver. The fact that it is that we see people in need, but we do that out of the love that Jesus has for those very people that Jesus said uh, that Jesus went to the cross for them. And Jesus said, hey, I, I, I want a relationship with them. We give out of that very thing. We help. Our generosity comes out of love. Um, Paul says this um, in his letter. Scripture says that whatever you do, be uh, let it be done in love. Love is the drive factor for literally everything that we do because it was love that God sent his one and only son Jesus Christ who died on a cross that we deserve it was out of love so when we give generously when we are a cheerful giver when we give to people when we donate to different uh nonprofit organizations when we donate to different charities when we even donate to people who are going on missions trips we must be a cheerful giver in doing so because it's out of love that we do that. You don't have to be so angry. You don't have to be so hateful when you do it because then the the offering's not out of love. It's not out of love that that offering comes, but you're pleased 
to do this very thing because you know out of love the cause of what those people are going to do, the cause of what God's going to do with that financial support, the cause of what um, could be else given, whatever it be prayer, whatever it be time, um, what God is going to do with that support, with those resources that you are giving um, is going to be tremendous, absolutely tremendous, but it has to be done <clears throat> out of love. You have to be a cheerful giver out of of love um and what i love uh about um the kind of this giving aspect and kind of this this caveat to really support these people uh who are on missions is i i encourage you and i challenge you hey if i find a missionary uh find a missionary organization and donate to them uh, help, help, help them, uh, raise support, help them raise money to go on these mission trips. Cause I tell you, it's very much needed. It's very much needed because understand this, uh, a lot of the times, um, they're, they're, they're not, uh, getting paid for that. They're, they're, they're not getting paid for that. They're doing it out of the fact that the gospel must be preached. The gospel must be taken places because that's the Great Commission. They see um, that the gospel must be taken to these regions where people are uh, are hurting. People are spiritually dead. People need Jesus Christ in their life, so they just see a need. But what they need help with is that financial support. What they need help with uh, is raising money to go out into these places where the gospel is needed. So I challenge you, I encourage you, hey, find a missions organization um, and help support them, help donate money to them. But one thing I really love, um, and one thing I learned, um, even going on, uh, mission trips, even learning, uh, in my classes, Hey, how, how do I raise support, uh, in going on a mission trip? Cause you may be thinking, Hey, I want to go on a mission trip. But I have no clue, uh, where to even look. I have no clue how to even raise support, uh, for that very thing. Um, one thing I love and one thing, um, that I, I I kind of took with me uh in going on those missions trips is uh in telling people and teaching people about those missions trips it's not it's not always about giving financially but one thing is this key question is what can I give H how can I give I maybe I maybe I don't have the money to give or 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 maybe um I'm I'm not in the best financial situation right now but. How else can I help support you? How else can I help give to you uh, in going on this journey that God is calling you on? So that may look like, hey, maybe I give prayer. Prayer is an important, important thing. It's how we communicate to God and how uh, we can intercede in what Paul is about to get to uh, kind of in those closing verses um, I can intercede for people. I can help pray for people as they go on, uh, these journeys, uh, of the, where God is calling to, uh, calling them to take the gospel, and help these people in need, wherever that may be, wherever it be in Asia, wherever it be in Africa, uh, whether it be in Central America, South America, wherever it be in Europe, or even maybe in our own country. Believe it or not, there's a lot of mission organizations that are in our own country where uh people in our country are hurting they're they're in desperate need of the gospel um so that key question how can you give you can give in prayer um you can give in your time uh you can give in your time you can uh you can help be there for him you can help have conversations with about him you can take your time and direct him uh to other people who may uh have some financial support they can give them uh so time is very important but more importantly even thinking in a local church setting too um you can give by prayer praying for your local church um that's very important and it's always needed uh for the church staff for the elders for the deacons uh for other people in your congregation but you can also give your time. You can give time uh, serving in your church, using your spiritual gift and what Paul is about to get into now about coming to the fullness of blessings of Christ. Um, you can give as um, you can help give time by serving in your local congregation, serving out in the community. Uh, so a plug. So if you want to serve within Highland Christian Church, man, I'd love to talk to you. Uh, but you can give in that very way and as you see it's the generosity that that's all done out of love because why the christians in macedonia the christians in Achaia, they were pleased to do so um in that very thing um and if we continue on 
in our text uh starting in verse uh picking back up in verse 28 it says this so when i have completed this and have been liver, uh, and have delivered to them what has been collected i will set up by way of you to spain and i know that when i come to you i will come in the fullness of the blessings of christ i will come in the fullness of the blessings of Christ. Um, and so in finishing kind of this reason, kind of finishing uh, and telling him about, hey, I, I, I got to go to Jerusalem. I, I, I got to do some uh, some kingdom work in Jerusalem. Um, I'm going to come to you, but I'm going to come to you in the fullness of the blessings in Christ. Um, and what I love is that uh, how scripture connects back to and how Paul really writes and kind of this literary genius of connecting points of Paul. He says this in the opening chapter of of his letter here he says in romans 1 11 through 13 for i am longing to see you so that i may share with you some spiritual gifts to strengthen you or rather so that we may be mutually encouraged by each other's faith both yours and mine i want to i want you to know brothers and sisters that i have often intended to come to you but thus far have been prevented in order that i may reap some harvest among you as i have among the rest of the gentiles the blessings of what god is going to them he's coming in the fullness of blessings taking his spiritual gift that god has given him allowing god to work through him and blessing uh them in this church then understand that your spiritual gift is a blessing to other people spiritual gifts are for the purpose in uh in building up the church they're there to serve the church they're not there to serve yourself they're there to serve the church and understand that is a true blessing that god is granting through you to other people within the church there's a reason why we did the spiritual gifts uh sermon series there's a reason why we did the spiritual gifts survey is because we want you to be that blessing uh, that God is using you through other through you for other people in this very church because that's the very thing that Paul wants to do and what we what he says uh, in his opening chapter I, I I want to be a blessing to you I, I I want to learn that also I want you to learn that also from me but guess what I want to learn also from you he says um or rather so that we may be mutually encouraged by each other's faith um both yours and mine i want you to know brothers and sisters, that i have often intended to come to you and that's that very reason seeing hey i want to be a blessing to you but hey i want you to be a blessing to me too i want to see what your faith is like i want to see how uh you can encourage me in this time why because i've heard tremendous things about this church in rome but that's the thing is i will come in the fullness of the blessings of Christ and that's an amazing thing that Paul states there because he understands his spiritual gift. Remember, he's very mature, uh, kind of his walking in his faith. He understands that hey, this spiritual gift, these gifts that I have, these resources, the things I know, this truth that I know, I want to bring it and bless you. I want to bring it and show you what God is doing through me. And that's an awesome and tremendous thing to really show that hey, it's not about me. It's not about me at all. It's not even about uh, me wanting money to go to Spain. It's the fact that I want to use my spiritual gift. But more importantly, I want to take this truth, this, this scripture. I want to take this truth to the ends of the world. I want to take it all the way out west, but I want to bring it even to you, even to this church in Rome and show you and do life with you and walk and teach uh, what God is about, what this gospel is about and who Jesus Christ is. And that is the Messiah. And so Paul is going to come to the fullness of and what we what we read here is that Paul is going to come in the fullness of blessings of Christ, bringing the truth to the church in Rome, and in return, he's going to learn and be encouraged by them as well, uh, doing life with them. But um, if we continue on um, in our text, we see um, in the last chapter, we're going to read um, from 30, uh, verse 32 uh, through 33, uh, kind of in this last uh, section of chapter 15, and Paul says this, I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by our Lord Jesus Christ and by the love of the Spirit to join me in earnest prayer to God on my behalf, that I may be rescued from the unbelievers in Judea, and that my ministry to Jerusalem may be acceptable to the saints, so that by God's will I may come to you with joy and be refreshed in your company, the God of peace be with 
all of you. Amen. Paul, in this very moment, um, he's appealing to his brothers and sisters, hey, pray for me. Pray for me in this very moment. Like I said before, uh, like as um, Justin said in the sermon, prayer is a powerful, powerful thing. Prayer is how we communicate with God. That's how we have conversation with God. That's an intimate moment we get to have God because we get to come and talk to God. And we have a God who wants to hear us. But Paul wants his brothers and sisters in the church in Rome, hey, pray for me. Um, pray for me, he says, by our Lord Jesus Christ and by the love of the Spirit, to join me in earnest prayer on God on my behalf that I may be rescued from the unbelievers uh, in Judea. So there's kind of... Um, uh, there's these people, mostly uh, Pharisees, mostly Jews, who are kind of opposing him in this very moment, who are kind of uh, seeing what he's doing. He's, he's preaching the truth and are going against the truth. So he's praying uh, kind of that um, he may be uh, rescued, kind of be um, brought away kind of from those distractions from uh, those unbelievers uh, in Judea, but also in that my ministry to Jerusalem may be acceptable to the saints there that may be acceptable to both the Jews and the Gentiles. Remember, there's that division that's kind of going on there in that very moment. And so the things that Paul's going to do in Jerusalem uh, may be acceptable, then may be received this gospel, this truth that he's about to tell them of. Kind of essentially what he's told them and what we've walked through so far because uh, they're struggling with the same problems in um in Jerusalem uh, with both the Gentiles and the Jews that may be received well, it may be accepted by the believers uh, there. And so what Paul says and what I love how Paul kind of runs out um, and essentially this kind of prayer and this charge that, hey, I want to come visit you and I want to go to Jerusalem. He says, uh, so that by God's will, I may come to you with joy and be refreshed in your company, that I, that I come with joy. I, I, I don't come with uh, an attitude. I don't come with being bogged down from what uh, um, what has been done to me before, but I come to you with joy. I come to you with this longing that I have seen to you. I come with utter, complete love for you. That when I, when I step off the boat or when I step off uh, from walking, I finally get to embrace you. I get to hug you. I get to sit down. We get to eat together. I come with joy because at last I have finally seen you. And that's the thing is when you really think about it is that Paul has wrote this very long letter, the longest letter that we have in our 66 books of the Bible, the longest letter we have in Scripture. Uh, all this writing, all this hearing um, of, of what he's hearing in Rome, hearing what they're doing in Rome, kind of the vision that's kind of happening, but also the good things that are happening in Rome, Paul finally wants to see them and wants to be able to rejoice that he is there with them. Um, and that's a beautiful thing, but also to really uh, drive in that factor is the last verse he says in chapter 15, he says, the God of peace be with all of you. The God of peace be with all of you, not just the Jews, right? Because there was that division, not just the Jews, not just the Gentiles, but Christians, all of you, everywhere, no matter uh, the Christians that are going to be out west, no matter the Christians that he's been in, no matter the Christians in Jerusalem, throughout the world, may the God of peace be with all of you, reassuring who God is, reassuring who the powerful one is, who brings the peace, who is the peacekeeper, who is Lord over their life. The God of peace may be with all of you. And so with that being said, as we walk through uh, what was this kind of simple, what seems so simple, hey, um, I'm going to, uh, I, I want to come visit you, Paul's plan to come visit Rome, and then I want to go out west, I want to go to Spain and take the gospel, take Jesus Christ, take uh, what he did for us on the cross out west, um, what seems like this simple passage ends up being something we can learn to learn of tremendously and what it, and what it means to be um a christian who is generous what it means to uh, be a, a a cheerful giver that hey when we give it's it, it's out of love we don't give um 
with anger in our heart. We, we don't give because um, we have to. We give because we see the need. We give because we want to. It's out of love. Um, and we learn kind of in this all session, um, and what we learn is that, hey, we, we fellowship together. We're in this life together. Uh, we should fellowship. Fellowship was an, uh, an essential aspect to the Christian church, not only then, but I should also be here now fellowshipping uh, with each other. Why? Because we're going to have eternity uh, with each other and really seeing um, kind of what Paul's vision is, kind of what Paul's calling is um, in going to visit the church in Rome and his relationship with the church in Rome. So that concludes our Romans Bible study uh, today and what we walk through in Romans chapter 15 verses 22 through 33. Um, so what we're going to go ahead and do um, is go ahead and pray. But before that, a uh, couple of announcements, uh, announcements to services. Uh, like always this Sunday, um, we're still continuing in our series about leadership and what it means to be a Christian leader uh, and walking through the the books of uh, the letters that Paul wrote to Timothy uh, first and second Timothy so two services like always um and with that being said let's go ahead and pray um will you pray with me God we thank you for this time we get to have we thank you that we get to walk uh together through your very word and God, it's so special to do that. It's, supposed, it's so special that uh, we can gather as believers, sit down and walk through it, walk through teaching, fellowship, do life with each other. So God, let what we read, what we walked through, what we learned be engraved into our hearts and our minds. Let this word be on repeat what it means to be a generous Christian, what it means to fellowship, uh, but more importantly, what it means to take the gospel to different places what your truth means. So God, we thank you and we love you. Thank you for sending your one and only son, Jesus Christ, for us, that we may have salvation. That is nothing we could have done, Lord. We couldn't earn it. You did all the work, God. All we had to do was have faith. And we thank you for that very thing. So we pray this in your heavenly name. Amen. Thanks, guys.